But maybe there won't be a second civil war because maybe before anything happens, the god of chaos, Asteroid, slams into the earth and just wipes everybody out. You know, there's a meme it goes around every four years. It says, you know, giant, what is it? Giant asteroid uh, 2020, like just come wipe us out already. It may happen. A 340 meter asteroid dubbed Apophis will, f- will make close flyby, flyby on April 13th, 2029. So eh, it's 340 meters. It's pretty big. I don't know how much damage that will do. Oh, no, oh, 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 I'm sorry. Wait. Well, oh, okay, okay, okay. I was confusing the distance and the, and the location for a second there, but let's read. Scientists have already begun preparations for an asteroid fly by a decade away. Asteroid Apophis, named for the serpentine Egyptian god of chaos, also known as Apep, will whiz past Earth on April 13th, 2029, at a distance of just 19,000 miles from, from the surface. I, I just got to say, please don't, don't, don't invoke Egyptian gods of chaos because you're getting way too close to Keck. And that's freaking me out. I'm not going to go through the whole uh, uh, Keck meme magic history, but I, I look it up. It's really interesting stuff. And they're talking about Egyptian gods of chaos and uh, oof. That's as close as some of the satellites currently orbiting our planet, NASA notes. Wow. While researchers have all but ruled the possibility of the 1,115-foot object slamming into Earth, the close shave will present a unique opportunity to study an asteroid in detail. So that's cool. Hopefully it doesn't slam into Earth and, uh, and we're okay. But uh, let's read on. The Apophis close approach in 2029 will be an incredible opportunity for science, said Marina Brozovic, Brozovic a radar scientist at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena, California, who works on radar observations of near-Earth objects. We'll observe the asteroids with both optical and radar telescopes. With radar observations, we might be able to see surface details that are only a few meters in size. It's expected to make its closest approach just before 6 p.m., when it will be over the Atlantic Ocean. According to NASA, however, it will be visible in the sky hours before this point. Woo! What, in 10 years? In 10 years? So you got 10 years! Don't worry. Apophis will first appear in the night sky over the southern hemisphere, making itself known to view, uh, viewers on the east coast of Australia. It will then travel westward to reach the equator by early afternoon before crossing over the U.S. by around 7 p.m. The massive space rock will be traveling so fast, it will traverse the full width of the moon in less than a minute, NASA says. While 19,000 miles might sound far away, the space agency says it's rare for an object of this size to come so close. Thankfully, the chances of an impact are extremely slim, despite initial calculations that put the chances of a 2029 collision at 2.7%. That's actually still a... It's, that's a... What? 2.7% is still a lot. Scientists have further refined its orbit and now say they've ruled out the possibility of an impact for the upcoming approach. Thank God. 2.7! That's like better than... like Winning the lottery is way less than that. They've estimated the risk at less than 1 in 100,000 many decades from now. The approach will, however, have an effect on Apophis. Uh, what do they say? Oh, okay. We already know that the close encounter with Earth will change Apophis's orbit, but our models also show the close approach could change the way this asteroid spins. And it is possible that there will be some surface changes like small avalanches, and uh, said David Farnaccia an astronomer at JPL Center for Near-Earth Object Studies. Scientists are meeting this week at the 2019 Planetary Defense Conference in College Park, Maryland. Whoa! I didn't even know that was happening. I'm not that far away from there. That's cool. Maybe I should go. Apophis is a representative of about 2,000 currently known potentially hazardous asteroids, PHAs. By observing Apophis uh, Apophis during its 2029 flyby, we will gain important scientific knowledge That could one day be used for planetary defense. Is that not the coolest thing you've heard of? I did not know we were having a planetary defense conference in Maryland. That sounds so epic. Let me ask you something. The likelihood that we actually have to deal with like an asteroid or something, slim to none. The likelihood we experience, I don't know, aliens or something invading Earth and attacking us, probably slim to none. But still, it's, it's, it's never a bad time to prepare. And planetary defense sounds awesome. So awesome, in fact, 
I have pulled up the website on nasa.gov slash planetary defense. This is awesome. If there's anything that could unite mankind, it would be an alien force. Perhaps you're familiar with the comic Watchmen. If you're not, they made a movie about it. But let me, let me, let me spoiler alert for it. It's like from the 80s. So basically, it's the height of the Cold War. You know, Russia and the U.S. have nukes pointed at each other. So they fab- so there's, there's a, an alien attack fabricated, which unites all of mankind to fight a common enemy. Planetary defense could be one of the most important things that helps us avert a potential civil war. Perhaps the crisis we're about to experience. If you followed my past few videos, let me explain. 80 years, uh, 80 years ago was World War II. 80 years before that was the Civil War. 80 years before that was the Revolutionary War. So some people believe we're about to enter a new crisis period, which involves some kind of conflict. But maybe, maybe the conflict won't be American. Maybe it will be Terran, Earth, uniting. So the story from NASA's planetary defense section does bring up Apophis. They have tweets here, Asteroid Watch. And they have a bunch of... Uh, they, uh, they invite the media to learn more about it. They've got a bunch of really cool uh, stories. So I, I recommend checking out. It's literally just nasa.gov slash planetary defense. Excuse me. But I decided to pull up frequently asked questions about planetary defense. Because, no, I don't believe we're talking about aliens. And we're not going to have spaceships battling fighters, aliens in space. But planetary defense involves probably not just asteroids either. But let's read about planetary defense. If Apophis does come to wipe us out, will we survive? They say, what is planetary defense? Planetary defense is a term used to encompass all the capabilities needed to detect the possibility and warn of potential asteroid or comet impacts with Earth, and then either prevent them or mitigate their possible effects. Planetary defense involves finding and tracking near-Earth objects that pose a hazard of impacting Earth, characterizing those objects, to determine their orbit, trajectory, size, shape, mass, composition, rotational dynamics, and other parameters so that experts can determine the severity of the potential impact event, warn of its timing and potential effects, and determine the means to mitigate the impact. I'm going to say this. They might not say it. Maybe they will. But I think planetary defense might include bunkers underground in case you can't do anything about the giant asteroid coming to wipe everybody out. Giant meteor, I think that's what people called it planning and implementation of measures to deflect or disrupt an object on an impact course with Earth, or to mitigate the effects of an impact that cannot be prevented. Oh, God. Mitigation measures that can be taken on Earth to protect lives and property include evacuation of the impact area and movement of critical infrastructure. Unless it's too big and it's going to (laughs) cause an extinction event. (laughs) What does Planetary Defense Coordination Office do? Uh, They have an overview page for it. Maybe we'll check it out. Let's get to the nitty gritty. How many near-Earth asteroids have been discovered so far? At the start of 2019, the number of discovered near-Earth asteroids totaled more than 19,000. An average of 30 new discoveries are added each week. The 15,000 milestone reached on October 13, 2016 marked a 50% increase in the number of known near-Earth asteroids since 2013. When discoveries reached 10,000 in August of this year, more than 95% of these objects were discovered by NASA-funded surveys. Since 1998, when NASA initially established the Near-Earth Object Observations Program and began tracking and cataloging them, the Jet Propulsion Laboratory Center or, uh, for NEO studies provided an up-to-date asteroid, uh, asteroid discovery statistics. I want to tell you something really interesting I learned. I went to a seminar, and it was called like, Christian Science or something. I was in California a couple of year, like a year, year and a half ago. And this guy was trying to make the case as to why God exists. And he pointed out all the weird coincidences of the solar system. What he said was, it's not just that the earth is in the right position from the sun and composed of the right chemicals and compounds and elements. You have to consider that the gas giants, Saturn and Jupiter, primarily Jupiter, the way they're orbiting, they actually pull on the asteroid belt which stops the asteroid belt from falling in and, and, and slamming into the, uh, inner, the inner solar system. But also that Jupiter as a gas giant actually absorbs a lot of these errant asteroids that effectively over time, it's acting like a filter, sweeping up and controlling, preventing asteroids from slamming into Earth. What, they, what he said, and this could be wrong. This could be wrong. If you're an astrophysicist, let me know. What he said was without Jupiter, we would have many, many more impact craters on Earth and other planets because they'd be slamming into objects all over the place. But we effectively have this big filter. So that's one aspect of planetary defense. 
I'm not gonna I, I'm not gonna get too much into this because you know admittedly I don't want to make this video super long and read you all about planetary defense. I was just sitting here and I like to sometimes do cool and fun science videos. So I did a video a couple I did a couple of videos about planetary defense and I think it's one of the coolest ideas ever. Uh, tracking asteroids, yeah, it's planetary defense. But you know what you know what I think about when I think about planetary defense? I think about you know like satellites that could fire directed energy weapons and like you know, um, orbital nukes to like wipe out asteroids before they come and stuff like that. Or maybe for those that are fans of anime, perhaps Saitama. That was a, that, that was a reference only for a select few who know One Punch Man. And that's how I'm going to end it off. Because I actually, One Punch Man, if you're not familiar, it's an anime and the new season's out. It's awesome. And I got a little uh, action figure behind me. But uh, he, he blew up an asteroid. That's the reference. Okay, I'm going to go. I'll see you guys tomorrow at 10 a.m. Take care.